Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, I'm going to talk about Europe Comics. Uh, in this case, literally a uh, the, the company Europe Comics. Um, but I just want to say in the offset that one of the biggest ways that people get themselves into trouble, whether you're a comic news reporter or whether you're just a fan watching YouTube or whoever it happens to be, is you take one small piece of information and you use it to kind of represent a huge market. In this case, uh, there there's trouble on the horizon, I would say, or it's a sign of worsening times for comics in general world, worldwide. Um, but it's really important that you understand before you go into hysterics that, you know, the the kind of the analogy here of Europe comics uh, shutting down consumer facing operations, which we're about to talk about. It's a little bit like if I told you, you know, video came on and I said, uh, you know, Aftershock is going bankrupt, entire comic industry doomed. You would go, well, you know, not a good sign that company is going bankrupt, but, you know, uh, not, it's, it's it, you know, it's a big difference between saying, you know, Marvel is closing and Aftershock is closing. So I use that as an analogy. I, I, you know, the size and comparison, if we really wanted to get into European comics, what's being distributed. I mean, it, it, look, it, it's not a, it's not a perfect comparison, but I just want you to put this in perspective. So what's going on here? Well, um, basically there's been a couple articles on this. The one I'm looking at, um, is, uh, coming off of comics beat. And so the uh, headline Europe comics, shutting down consumer facing operations, comics stronger than ever. No, I'm, I'm just kidding about that last part. Um, but, um, this is following a bit of a trend of three, three kind of events This being the third. So the, the, the news, the headline here is that digital exclusive publisher, by the way, I've seen some other people kind of note on this and they, they kind of, they, they tend to leave out the digital exclusive and then they tend to uh, call Europe comics, like all of Europe comics, but the company name is actually Europe comics. Anyway, digital exclusive publisher Europe comics today announced it will be ceasing consumer facing activities and that, uh, they're, you know, they, they specifically say we're not stopping. We're continuing to release several books every month, but, uh, their website, social media, newsletters, and events are ending. Um, so if you're a comic company, I mean, this is one of those, uh, common sense kind of things. Um, sure. I, I'm sure they will continue to release a few books a month for a while, but if you're shutting down your entire marketing arm, your website, social media, newsletters, events, communication, um, y yeah, it, it's winding to a close. Okay. So what's a little bit frustrating about this article is like a lot of articles now, and particularly in the comic quote unquote media, uh, they intersperse a lot of the paragraphs with like copying things out of Wikipedia and then giant images that break up the text. Um, so you kind of have to unwind a little bit what's going on. So first off, uh, what is Europe comics? Well, for Europe comics is a, a joint venture basically between um, a, a handful of European, primarily French uh, publishers who are translating and then releasing digital exclusive editions of work that are unavailable in English um, with the idea that when they do that, they gain some traction, they can sell the international publishing rights. Now, Europe Comics is owned by a media participations group, and they own uh, a handful of comics companies uh, and, and really famous ones, much bigger ones like Dupus, uh, Le Lombard, um, and they're a major publishing house. So, uh, you know, media participations is, uh, it says in the article, the fourth largest publishing company in France. I thought it was the third, but, you know, hey, who's quibbling over that? But anyway, they're a major company. So um, what uh, what Europe Comic has primarily done is they've brought a lot of, of new talent, new books, and gotten people exposure. And I think um, it's one of the primary ways that European titles get other places. Um, European Europe has a lot of comics, but you wouldn't particularly know about it if you follow 90% of uh, comic social media and YouTube who tend to talk about Western comics and how much they suck and manga and how much it's amazing. Everybody kind of tends to forget about old Europe and South America, which produce a pretty awesome amount of comics. And it's another reminder that I need to do a lot more of, of talking about Europe comics. Um, but, uh, it, you know, Europe comics was kind of a weird anomaly. And, and I think within the industry, people 
suspected that it wasn't uh, going to continue or, or things weren't going particularly well. It began in 2015, so relatively recently. And then during COVID, a time when, in theory, you would expect uh, success. Uh, you know, people are at home. Europe was particularly locked down. You'd think digital comics would have a little bit of a boom, but um, it didn't really happen. It's not like it, it tanked during that time. It just it didn't, it didn't get the bounce uh, you would expect. Now, the, the major factor probably contributing in all this uh, is buried way down in the article, and that is that um, uh, uh, co-founder and director Sophie Castile uh, died uh, kind of mid-last year. And uh, she was a huge advocate for uh, both Europe comics and then just European comics in general, getting them developed, uh, getting things distributed. And, and this is a, a fairly large uh, presence, I'd say, in this, this space. So, you know, when you, when you have somebody who is a co-founder and, and key to the operations, definitely have a lot of passion, passes away, unfortunately, then, you know, the, the company not continuing is not a big surprise. So I think the, the, the headline here is not, you know, uh, woke comics, fuck everything. Because by and large, uh, Europe comics and the titles they produced were, you know, were not, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, it's hard to tell what the definition of woke is at this point. But, you know, they had a lot of different things. They had books about families. They had books about uh, war, books, you know, adventure books. They had all kinds of different things. And I think um, I think you'd have to be really, really cherry picking and selective if you were, say, this is a result of you know, European liberal politics. I, I, I think, again, you'd, you'd be there's a bunch of fantasy adventure stuff they did. Some really great books. Honestly, there's some some really good stuff, and I think uh, uh, Europe comics, uh, in particular, I think brought a lot of books to my attention that that I wasn't aware of. Uh, so I, I I will miss them for sure. Um, there's uh, it, it just provided accessibility. So so there's some good stuff. Um, you know, it, it's 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 going to be missed. And it's it's tough, but it didn't it didn't really get traction in the U.S. Um, it did produce a lot of good material, but again, it, if you're probably my guess is if you're listening to this video, you're here going for the first time. But I'd say the other more troubling part of all this is that uh, you know, much like Comicsology, the is Neo is Neo. I, I mean, I, I butcher all the names. It is funny. The, uh, the old mispronunciation trick, fuck, that works so well. I don't know. It just drives engagement. I hate it. I hate that. But YouTube gives you little suggestions. One of the things they say is mispronounce or get kind of key facts wrong and just watch your comments explode. And I got, damn it, they're right. Anyway, I'm also dumb. So I, I, let's not pretend it's all just a, a you know, fourth dimensional trick on mine. But anyway, so um, anyway, the Isneo store um, in English is closing. And if you actually go to their site, uh, it goes to a 404 at this point, And it got to a very, very kind of abrupt. We were right to inform you of closing a store and membership. It's all going away. We're restructuring. You will no longer have access to English store and it's done. And that just happened uh, very, very rapidly. Um, so anyway, I think that that's disturbing. Just, you know, goes to a 404. And if you were getting comics this way, you're, you're kind of fucked at this point in terms of your catalog. Um, that of course this happened earlier this month before the comicsology mass or right about the same time, actually. I mean, yeah, right about me, right around the same, same kind of moment. Um, this is the French digital comic storefront, uh, and which, which basically the impact of that is a, they downscale removed all of their international operations, basically selling it, you know, it's, it's not worth the cost to keep going, um, in these international markets that aren't making us any money. Um, and then there was uh, kind of the announcement that a handful of creators are basically, you know, not able to afford their living, uh, which got some traction earlier this month in Europe. So what does all this mean? Um, none of this is healthy. I mean, you know, again, it, it doesn't have to be because of, of uh, you know, anything with the culture war that this stuff is shutting down, but it's shutting down is not good. I think that's people tie these two things together, particularly the beat, you know, that that loves to do this. You know, all complaints are a result of incels. But in this case, you have a beloved kind of founder who's passing away, takes takes a, you know, one, one piece largely off the board uh, with Europe comics. You have a storefront, 
basically giving up on porting this stuff into the U.S. That's that's a blow. And then you have uh, creators being more and more public in a different market, in this case Europe, saying we can't afford our lifestyle like any lifestyle and do this business. It's not good. And, and remember, you know, Marvel in particular has been going overseas to South America and to Europe to get talent. And you're seeing that talent, some of the people who, who took those jobs starting to go, yeah, I, I mean, but I'm paid peanuts over here. So anyway, that's the context of what's going on here. It's, um, you know, we don't talk about other markets, but a little bit of information for you. It's not good. None of this is good. And there's, you know, there's not a ready-made like, oh, well, here's, uh, you know, here's, here's three other companies. I mean, the, the interesting part about Europe comics um, that I think is, uh, I, I don't know, is probably the, the more troubling part is that uh, Europe comics, because they pulled together a couple other companies, it gave a higher chance for those groups to make money and survive. And we're talking about Bowen, BAO, Cinebook, Darkwood, Debugs, uh, Dargard, Dupus, Le Lombard, um, Tomoff, I'm, I, again, I'm just, you know, I'm just screwing all kinds of wording here, but, uh, but we're talking about, you know, some companies from Serbia, from Belgium, from Poland, from Italy. This was a, a pretty good mechanism for them to make money. So Europe comics stepping back means all those publishers now have to go back to the drawing board and how they get their books out. That's going to be hard for them too. So, so this will have a ripple effect. That's pretty negative. Anyway, there you go. Now you're more, now you know more. So uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Nobody is, I'm predicting very low hit count on this because nobody gives a shit, but I'll put something really spicy in the, uh, in the headline of the video. So, you know, it, it draws in the rubes. That's what we do here. Anyway, thanks for listening.